Hey guys, Chris Fix here. Today we're going to flush the coolant on this 2000 BMW 540i. Go through all the steps to get all the old coolant out, then flush the whole cooling system, and then put brand new antifreeze in. So let's begin. We're going to start by removing all the coolant from this system, but before you remove the coolant from this system, what you want to do is you want to make sure that it is cold. You don't want to touch a hot cooling system. The cooling system is pressurized. If you undo any caps or you loosen any hoses, you could have hot coolant shooting out at you, and that's never good. So you want to make sure the coolant temperature is in the blue area or below. So now we'll go under the car and look for the radiator petcock, which is a drain plug for the radiator. So here's one corner of the radiator. There's the other corner. In this case, it's on the driver's side corner. The petcocks are almost always located in the corner of the radiator. And this blue thing right here is what needs to get unscrewed and the coolant will drain out of that. Next step, we're using one of these baking pans. It's aluminum, it's disposable. Slides underneath the BMW. BMW is pretty low, we didn't want to jack it up. Now we can go underneath and drain the coolant. As we wait for that to drain, let's check out what we're going to need to do a coolant flush. So here are all the tools you're going to need. You might need some basic hand tools, so get your toolbox. We're going to be filling up with 50-50 antifreeze. Make sure you check your owner's manual for the correct type of antifreeze that you need to use. Get your paper towels, funnel, we're using distilled water to flush out the cooling system. Make sure you use distilled and not filtered. We're going to be using a anti-rust sealer and protector. And when we're doing the flush, we're going to be using a chemical flush that will help flush out the radiator even better. After the coolant drains out, make sure you collect all the coolant and dispose of it properly so animals don't drink it and you don't pollute the area. Then we could put the drain plug back and tighten it up all the way so we could fill the cooling system with water. So on this BMW, we're going to fill up this reservoir here with water. You can see it's emptied. Just get your funnel. This system takes three gallons. After you fill it up all the way like that, go start your engine. With the engine running, add the rest of your water. The water pump will suck the water into the engine and radiator, allowing you to fill it completely so there's no air in the system. Now we're gonna add our chemical flush. Add the whole thing. Okay, let's go for a ride. On our ride, the car is running great and maintaining operating temperature. We're going to drive around for at least 10 minutes so the water and chemical flush clean out the cooling system. As we drive, pay attention to the temperature. Make sure that you don't have a problem with air in the system that could cause your engine to overheat. You want to make sure that you're blasting your heat all the way. You want to feel the heat. If you don't feel the heat, then you have air in your heater core and you might not have added enough water. We've been driving around for about 15 minutes. The temperature has been stable. So we're going to head back and flush out all the water and then add our antifreeze and go for another ride. Now that we're back from our ride, let's go drain the water out of the cooling system, get all the crud from the cooling system flushed out. As we wait for the engine to cool down, we're gonna fill up the old containers with the old antifreeze so we could recycle it. So you wanna take your old coolant, fill up your containers that you've been using so you could recycle it. Your local auto parts store, your town recycle center, and many other places take this stuff, so you'll have no problem recycling it. Once your cooling system is cooled to the touch, and the temperature gauge is on low, now we can go underneath and drain the water. So to have the coolant come out faster, take off the radiator cap, or in this case the reservoir cap, and that'll just allow air to come through here so there won't be any suction. If the water stops draining and you don't think you got it all out, start up the engine. This will cause the water pump to force out any of the remaining water into the radiator so it could drain. You can give it some gas. As you can see, we got most of the water out, which is good. Make sure you get all that water out of there. You can see it's pretty clear. We went from this coming out of the radiator to that, which means our cooling system is pretty clean. And now we're going to add the brand new 50-50 antifreeze mix. Before we do that, let's install the drain plug. Make sure you lock it into place so you don't have any leaks. Now we're going to fill up the cooling system with a 50-50 antifreeze mix. The stuff we're using is compatible with all cooling systems, but make sure you check your owner's manual so you know the correct type of antifreeze you should use. 
We know that we need three of these one gallon containers to fill the cooling system. So if we don't use all the containers, we know some water is still stuck in the cooling system. A little water is okay, but you don't want too much because then your water to antifreeze ratio won't be close enough to 50-50. We have our last bottle of antifreeze, and when you can't add any more antifreeze, start the engine. And it'll suck it right down, and you just keep adding it. Make sure your heat is on. A little trick is if you turn this sideways, and then you pour it out, it'll pour out smoothly so it won't splash all over the place. Now we're adding our anti-rust and sealer additive. This engine's old and the additive will prevent any leaks due to the flushing of the cooling system. And then we'll finish our third bottle of antifreeze and we're almost done. So we know that it's filled up all the way because we added the correct amount of coolant. So we could take this out and you can actually see it's filled up right to the top where it needs to get filled. So now we'll put the cat back on and we'll go for a ride. On our ride, the car is running great and maintaining operating temperature. We also have the heat on, and I can feel the heat coming up right now, which is good. That means the heater core doesn't have air in it. Okay, we got back from our ride, and if you look, the coolant temperature is exactly where it's supposed to be, 106 Celsius. And we look here, the coolant temperature gauge is right in the middle where it's supposed to be, and that's a job well done. That's how you flush a cooling system in a car. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, remember to give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. I'm gonna let my bud do the top tip. What's the top tip for this video? Top tip for this video is make sure you check the weather before you go outside and start a project. Cause you don't wanna end up outside in the rain and all wet. <laughs> Especially when it's 40 degrees.